Well, as you guys all heard, I'm here with Natalia, the Beast Beast, uh, Tally Payne, um, the the acts and stuff will be on the screen, so you don't have to worry about that. We're going to take care of that in the video. But let's just start off with first, how are things? I know we had the quarantine, and then we had the riots, and I mean, there was killer bugs, and just all kinds of shit going on so far. Uh, how have things been over there in New Mexico? Yeah, this game of Jumanji has been pretty interesting, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, it was, I was out here getting ready for my pro debut in April. And I think it was about two and a half weeks out, we got the call that it was canceled because of the pandemic. That's when the pandemic was happening. And it was a big bummer because me and one of my teammates, we had been training about eight weeks uh, getting ready for that. And then, of course, last two weeks, it gets called off. So it's kind of a bummer. I ended up going home because I split my time between New Mexico and California. So I went home for a bit, just kind of needed to be home with my family, my husband, my animals. And then we got word that the fight was actually postponed till July. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go back out and get ready for my fight in July. So I was planning on being out here. Same. I usually come out for about eight, eight to 10 weeks. You know, I try to really dedicate myself in my camps in New Mexico. So we got out here three weeks in we get the text message and we were kind of prepared for it just with everything going on, especially being in California because they are, I think a lot more strict uh, or just, you know, bigger population. So they're uh, in a lot tighter position than anywhere else. And so uh, it's been, we just found out, like, I think it was a couple days ago last week that the fight was off and it was a big bummer. I was getting so excited, really pumped. But then I kind of had to have that conversation with my husband. We're like, you know what? The minute uh, we get the approval that things can start opening up, things are going to open up, fights are going to get booked. And it was like, well, I'm out here already. Let me be ready for something in July. I'm technically a free agent now. And we've been reaching out to some of the bigger promotions that can start putting on shows. And if I have to travel, I'll travel wherever it is. And so... I want to be ready for anything that could come up, possibly July and August. That's kind of where I'm mm, estimating right now. Um, get ready, be ready, and then I can kind of take something short notice. So that's the plan right now. It's been so crazy. I almost came home because uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but my husband is actually a police officer. So I have been in a very weird position right now. And I wanted to come home for a little bit, but we both had that agreement. It was like, you know what? He's busy being there. He knows I'm still supporting him out here. And this is something, this is a dream that we just decided we need to go all in with it. We're lucky not to have kids. So I decided to stay out here. And like I said, hopefully something in July. And then after that, we'll kind of reassess. Because as of right now, we really have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, I, I totally get it. It's been it's been tough for me because I actually call fights for a promotion out here. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're sick of me because I'm like, you know, any word, any word. So, it's it's definitely been a struggle. And you know, uh, kudos to your your husband for you know serving. It's been a very difficult position because I have friends on both sides. I have people, you know, calling me a hypocrite because I support both sides. Uh, so it's been something interesting to navigate. I've, my husband and I have been together about uh, five or six years, about five years now. And um, so we've gone through some other interesting incidences with police officers. So I had kind of felt back then what it was like being a police officer wife and seeing all the anti-police stuff. And this, of course, is to an extreme. So it's just a really, it's just heart-wrenching. All of this is just so heartbreaking that this is what our society is kind of turning into right now. And I just want, you know, cannot wait for everything. We were just saying we wanted the pandemic to be over. Now it's like we want that change to come for sure. Um, my husband is one of those that they hate those cops as much as you know the next person because of what it's creating for them and now this kind of 
stereotype that they're kind of stuck with 100%. So for them to still have to keep a smile on and just do their job, it's very difficult. And yeah, I praise him for doing it. And then also just encouraging me to be out here away from that and doing what I can despite everything going on. Yeah, it's, it's pretty commendable. And, you know, I talked to him. Uh, he helped uh, coordinate this whole thing. And <laughs> Sorry, my little boy over there. Um, he was talking to me about your training situation and how you kind of bounce back back and forth between home and, and yeah. New Mexico. Let's talk about your training. Uh, I understand that you went out there. You were first over at uh, – Jackson Winks, and then you got the invite to come over to, what is it, the BMF, the Bad Motherfucker Ranch? Yeah, so it's pretty cool. I came out here to Jackson Wink officially in November of 2018. So this November will technically be two years that I've been splitting my time. Like I said, sometimes maybe eight to ten weeks, sometimes a little bit more at a time. And this last... I came out, like I said, I came out here for this last camp, was getting ready for July 12th, and everything, nothing was going on. So even at Jackson's, they were completely closed down. And I got out here, and I was like, you know what, I need to be ready. I have to train. I need bodies. And I just happened to reach out to him, and I know women are usually, it's a kind of boys-only camp. So I was like, I'll see what happens. Who knows? But I had seen people like Rose Nami Yunus actually had gone out there. And in my mind, it was like, look, if I had the opportunity even to be a body for somebody like that, that's an opportunity I would love to take. And so I reached out to him and was like, look, if you ever have any girls that need rounds, I'm always, I'm always down. I'm always up for the challenge. And he was like, well, come on out. <laughs> and right. it kind of, <clears throat> we go out there usually on days that are heavy jujitsu and grappling because my jujitsu coach is his jujitsu grappling coach. So he has a, a couple different coaches. And so we kind of tag along with my coach. Thank goodness he allows us to go out there and um, it's been awesome. So now Jackson's, this is the first week actually that they've really somewhat opened up. We are not fully open. We're not allowed to say we're fully open and we still have to be very careful, but they have classes going for us. So for me to be able to have both places was just, it was a dream come true. It's so awesome. And I'm, I feel so grateful to have those opportunities and to be around just all these different coaches. You know, it's MMA, it's a mixed martial art. So everybody has their masters and to just have any little piece of knowledge from these people is something it's an academy. I love it out here. So it's school for me. So I really enjoy it. Okay. And then, uh, feel free to name drop. Cause I know that you've got some <laughs> names that, of some girls that you've been putting in work with. Cause I heard them and I was just like, wow, that's really <laughs> Well, it was, like I said, I came out here and I kind of quietly came in. I just wanted to test myself, see how I hung. I started with the amateurs because I was an amateur when I got out here. And after a while, we ran, they kind of didn't have a lot of girls in the pro class. And so I was like, you know what? I decided to jump in there and kind of got permission to jump in with the pros and it was amazing <laughs> because I would show up to these classes and this was at the time when we had we had girls from all over the world. We had Lithuania, Spain, Germany, Russia, just name it and we had it and it was amazing. So I got to test my skills against all of these awesome women and um, my big kind of real big accomplishment after being here, I think it was about a year, was uh, Michelle Watterson was getting ready for Carolina. I can't think of her name right now, but she's a Muay Thai specialist, and I do Muay Thai. And so I was able to be a big part of that camp, getting ready for that, and it was awesome. You know, I, I had black eyes for about eight weeks straight. They just kind of kept trading off, uh, but it was amazing, and to be in a ring with Michelle or someone like Holly and then to have the coaching and 
it's awesome. It is just like I said, it's kind of like a dream come true. I sometimes after the class, I really just sit there and evaluate everything that happened. And it was like, yep, I just went some crazy rounds with Michelle Watterson and Holly Holm and was able to hang with Jody Esquivel and all this kind of stuff. So it was really good to find out where I kind of fit in with these girls. And it was reassurance that we made the right move. I'm out here. I'm progressing. And I know one of these days I'm going to be able to be in those positions. And it worked out because they actually didn't have a lot of flyweights out here. They have a lot of uh, small girls, 115ers, 105ers, and mm -hmm. Holly, who's 135. Um, a couple 135ers, some bigger girls. But I'm lucky because I'm right in the middle. So I can go with both. And it gets me strong regardless. And we actually have a lot of really, really good uh, lightweight guys out here. So having the girls with their style and then being able to go with the boys and their strength, it's been, like I said, it's just kind of leveled me up completely. So it's awesome. Right on, right on. And then uh, you touched on it a little bit, uh, referencing the Carolina cable cabbage, I believe is. Yeah. How you pronounce it. Um, you brought up Muay Thai. So let's talk about your background. A little bit. Yeah. Um, so I just, ha I was actually a dancer, performer, actress, kind of did that all growing up. Um, my dad wanted us to do sports. He got two girls. <laughs> so we were in the performing arts. I played the cello. It was just very uh, that side of things, you know, a little bit of a dork. I went to a performing arts school and that was my life. And I think just we had a Muay Thai gym. Um, five minutes from my house. I think it was about uh, going into my eighth grade year. So I think I was about 14, um, actually maybe going into freshman year. So I was about 14 and kind of just picked it up because I wanted to stay in shape over the summer. I was like, oh, this will be fun. Keeps me active. I've struggled a lot with uh, weight and body issues and all this kind of stuff. So we were like, this is a perfect combination. Um, I also grew up in Southern California, which is predominantly Hispanic and had some uh, issues in school and was like, you know what, if I'm going into high school, <laughs> maybe I should learn to protect myself a little, just have something in my back pocket. And six months into doing it, my coach was like, okay, you have a fight. And I was like, okay, I guess I'm fighting. And this was this gym, like I said, was so close to Mexico. I grew up in very, very Southern California. So we ended up, he took a group of us. It was a bunch of young kids. He had a daughter involved in it and a son and kind of bust us all down to Mexico. And we started going down to Mexico. We did Tecate, Tijuana, Rosarito, just fighting down there like full on chicken fights <laughs> in the dirt and then in, in these gymnasios in the middle of nowhere. And that it, it was the weirdest thing. Obviously it took my mom a minute to get used to it. Uh, my dad fell in love with it. My dad's done everything in the book. Um, and it kind of just stuck. And I was able to go and do IKF fights like in Florida. I went to Iowa. Um, I actually fought at like Master Toddies in Vegas. And nice. it was just fell in love with it. You know, it was one of those, like I said, being a dancer, it was a very easy transition for me. And I was actually kind of good at it. For some reason, I picked it up. I was never very book heavy. Um, I'm a very visual learner. So show me a dance, I can do it. Show me a combination. I can do it. And I had some anger issues. So all of this kind of worked out perfect. And so technically, I've actually been doing it um, well, almost 15 years now. So I've been doing Muay Thai for 15 years. And um, when I was about 18, took a bit of a break, fell in love, gained a lot of weight, just kind of did that thing. And it was kind of just like a revenge. Like, I just want to have one more Muay Thai fight. Let me just go out on a good note and then see what hap see what else I can do with my life. And because uh, unfortunately, I know with Muay Thai, there's not a lot of money in it. And it was one of those, I don't want to be killing myself for not a lot of money. I've done it plenty of times. 
I've had lots of fights. I've had over 30 Muay Thai fights. So it was kind of one of those things I just personally wanted to do it, just to say I did it. But I knew I didn't want to pursue a career in it because of that. And uh, we happened to be training at a gym. We were actually training at Rampage Fitness in Orange County. And the coach there was like, uh, he was telling me about Combat Samba. So Combat Sambo, you kind of have the combination of both. It worked for me because I was a stand-up fighter. And we were like, well, why don't I do some Muay Thai or uh, MMA? Why not throw it all together? You know, I had been doing boxing, got really heavy with my boxing. So I knew my stand-up was really well. And then I kind of fell in love with the wrestling and the jiu-jitsu. And so I was like, look, there's money in here. This is a perfect time for women. Uh, we went at it as very like business-like, like we have a plan. This is an investment. Uh, I, we had a timeline. And so we were like, you know what, let's just go for it. Let's see what happens. Um, I was very blessed in California because I had an amazing boxing gym. I had an amazing jujitsu coach. I could go to these places, but I needed a place to put it all together. And I wasn't clicking with some of the gyms. I've gone to Oyama, loved Oyama, um, was able to just train at a couple of these different places, but wasn't finding, I think, my click, you know. And my husband was actually the one who used to watch a lot of those, um, a lot of the, like, uh, I don't know what it's called anymore, but basically when fighters, UFC fighters, were preparing for fights. Mm -hmm. And I remember him telling me about Jackson Wink. And we had watched, I think it was watching Holly Holm prepare for her Ronda Rousey fight. Mm -hmm. So we saw what it went like. And my husband was the one that kind of suggested, why don't you go, why don't we go see how it is? If you don't like it, then we'll figure it out. Um, and if you enjoy it, we'll figure it out. So we packed up the dogs, came out here for a week, and I fell in love. <laughs> and... It was a really actually difficult situation because we were actually newlyweds. We, I don't even, I think we had been married maybe a year before we kind of took the sleep. We got married April of 2017 and I was out here 2018, end of 2018. Right. So it was like a big, everybody was like, wait, what's going on? Are you guys divorcing? It was very confusing time for everyone because it's just not a normal route that, most people are going to take. And um, we we just kind of had a really good discussion. I'm very lucky that he is so open and can communicate. And we decided this is the best move for us right now. Again, being lucky we don't have kids. Um, him being in the position he was to allow me to pursue this. And so we were like, okay, let's do it. And it's been, um, we're, we've been figuring it out as we go for sure, <laughs> but we actually have just purchased a house out here. So oh, wow. it will be, that's kind of securing, like, this will be my home gym, especially these first couple fights as a pro. So uh, when I'm not here, we have options, but when I'm here, I now have a home to come to instead of just like an apartment. That I, you know, I want to have my dogs out here and just a little bit more security. So that's kind of, yeah, where we're at with it right now. <laughs> that's that's big, big stuff. Yeah, like I said, we didn't realize what was going to happen. Um, the pandemic happened, so that literally put a halt on everything. And we really had to reevaluate things. But again, we knew everything's paid off so far with this move so we're like okay let's keep going i feel like i'm so close i just got to keep kind of grinding and then we'll see what happens with it so that's the plan okay and uh through your muay thai and all your uh, striking that you uh, competed in uh you collected belts along the way so obviously the stand-up is is right there where it needs to be especially if you're going to be transitioning into mma but where's the ground game at well, and that's what's awesome, too, is because I am known as a stand-up fighter, that's what I'm known as. And I kind of like it like that for now. Um, I have been very blessed with an amazing wrestling coach out here and an amazing grappling coach out here. And again, it has taken my level to a few above, you know, and I couldn't be more happy with it. So it's one of those I... 
let people think I'm a stand-up fighter. <laughs> and then they will be very surprised with what happens next, you know? Um, like I said, uh, out here we work on everything. This is a mixed martial art, so we know you have to be prepared for everything. And I'm lucky I have coaches that understand that. Um, these coaches are not, you know, I have a wrestling coach and I have a jujitsu coach, but they are very aware of fighting and MMA, what works in MMA, what doesn't work in MMA. And that I think is very hard to find. Obviously people will be amazing at what they do. Um, like I said, they'll be a master at what they do, but finding people who can combine all of that, use my strengths see what works for all these different people, I think is very rare to find. And I have found those people out here. So I'm so blessed. You know, I love my wrestling. I wish I had done it in high school now that I think of it, but I didn't want to wear a singlet. <laughs> you know, I wanted to do it. I thought about it, ended up cheering instead, you know, but I do love wrestling. It's just very hard on my um, 30 year old body, even though it's, only 30. It's uh, I'll soon to be 30 year old body. It's really rough. So I have to be very smart and strategic with my grappling. Okay. All right. So it sounds like you're putting all of the pieces to this puzzle together. Now, yes. four and one overall. And like you said, I think you, you uh, made the decision to go pro, correct? Yeah. Okay. And it looks like the loan loss uh, was in your your amateur debut, mm -hmm. uh, yes. which uh, I have insider information that it was real short notice and everything was all <laughs> fucked up. Okay, so I know why the L is there. But since then, you've been on a hot streak. We got four wins in a row. We got a couple decisions and a couple uh, or a, a, a decisions and a knockout. Mm -hmm. So that tells people that you've got the cardio to go and you got the hands to put them away. And like I said, we're just putting the puzzle pieces together. Uh, do you think that's getting you any notice with uh, these outside organizations? Um, actually, yes. I think it's one of those, we know what gets you noticed and having those very exciting, maybe quick finishes is what it is. Um, I've been, I consider it lucky because I've had some really good challenging fights. They're not... Uh, what my husband calls tomato cans. <laughs> so I've been able to really test myself against good girls, different types of girls, whether they be jujitsu and stuff. So I'm happy to have that, what I call ring experience. And I think once you see me as a fighter, each time has been a different fighter. And I think that's what may be appealing to some of these people is each time I've progressed and come out a lot stronger and it's only going up, you know? So I'm really excited about it. And as weird as it is, um, it's the promotional side of it as well. I've been very lucky again to have my husband who is very good at um, doing media kits and little things like this. So I kind of call him my hubbager and we manage my Instagram together. We do all this kind of stuff because we realize it's a business and to get out there, you have to have something to it, whether it be somewhat of a character or what, you know? And so I'm trying to show these uh, promotions, like, look, you want people who can speak in front of a camera as well as put on an amazing show. And I'm one of those that can kind of do both. And I'm very proud to have that experience of talking in front of crowds and being somewhat of a performer. So each of my fights are, you know, fight of the night quality, in my opinion, because I'm different than most, you know, I'll come out in the ring, I'm completely different. And then right at the end, I'm smiling and dancing and kind of appealing, I think, to different populations as well. Um, because of all these different things I'm involved in, all the different people I know. Uh, yeah, I appeal to multiple populations. So I think it's one of those, that's where the money comes. And if they want money, it's like, I'll bring you the people. You just wait. <laughs> the full package. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. On paper and in the ring, you're starting to put yeah. things together very well. I yeah. saw your, uh, your highlight that your husband sent to me. It was very good. Um, 
I think you need to get yourself a photographer so that they can uh, work on stuff outside of fighting. You know yeah. what I mean? I think yes. being promotable is something that it, it, it gives you value to a promotion. Yeah. If they know and see that you're promotable, they're going to be like, I can run with that. And you've already done most of the work. Yeah. And that's where actually, um, as you, it's funny you say that because we've been realizing how important that is, you know, as silly as it is. And I know for a lot of fighters, especially the guys, they don't want to do that. They hate doing that. Um, I have a girlfriend, same thing. She's like, I'm just, I'm not that person. And I was like, you don't have, you be who you are, just kind of emphasize it. And um, again, I'm a former, I actually like performing in front of people. And so that works as an advantage to me. And we've realized what, you know, talking to managers and agents, we realize what good pictures, um, very professional pictures can kind of change things, you know, just how people, it you appeal to people. So that's something I've actually been, I've been shy growing up and never really wanted to do that. I've always felt funny in front of the camera, but learning as I go, like, no, this is for my business. I'm just promoting myself because I am my business and um, it's actually helped. And so I'm taking those, you know, taking those opportunities. If a photo shoot comes up, uh, whatever it may be, we have fun with it and kind of go with it. Okay. Uh, we've been at it for a while now. So <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. What I, what I want to do here is I think that uh, my listeners and uh, the people following you, they got a chance to, you know, get to know a little bit about your background and stuff. And what I want to do is right before you get your next fight, okay, let's come on again so we could talk about oh, how, yeah. camp went, how camp went and, you know, what, what else leveled up in training and, you know, what else happens in between? Because who knows? I mean, this year has just been absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that sounds like a plan. Like I said, I'm hoping for July and August. So we'll be uh, chatting pretty soon is what I hope. And already first week of camp has gone amazing. So we'll hopefully have some good stuff to tell you too. <laughs> right on. So we've reached the point of the interview where I turn it over to you and just give you a chance to thank training partners, uh, sponsors, you know, basically whoever you want to give credit to so far on your journey. Just, you know, go ahead, take as long as you want. Well, the main thing, um, as you know, uh, HKA, I'm so grateful for this uh, company. Um, Nick, everyone involved in it, they have just been beyond amazing to me, my husband, my family. They're awesome. And so I just always want to thank them, you know, Feed Me, Fight Me, Valley Tudo. These are my main sponsors, and I'm so grateful for them as well. Just always backing me, always supporting me. Yeah, those are yeah. beautiful. I saw those online. I was wondering who was getting those. Mm -hmm. That's her. Right. All my stuff is HKA. Yeah. I'm decking my girlfriend out in HKA. And it's just one of those they like I said always pushing for me so supportive haven't even gotten an opportunity to meet Nick yet in person but everybody has been so supportive they've connected us to so many people so very grateful for them and my girls my girls know who they are at Jackson Wink um, very grateful as well to be going up to BMF whenever we get the opportunity and the coaches there Jafari Harry Lenny all of my people they know who they are and um just always so grateful for them and I'm excited to kind of bring them along for the ride and kind of the new generation is coming we're here and we're ready to take over so I'm excited to kind of show people and bring with me these people that have been with me from the beginning too well I really think that uh, everybody's in for a little treat once you uh, do get that fight I think Absolutely. everybody's in for a treat. <laughs> I'm just hoping it's on the biggest platform possible. Because like I said, I've seen the highlights and I definitely like what I see. So like yeah. I said, hopefully it's a, you know, it's a nice promotion with a, a you know, a, a good name that can, yeah. you know, take you to the next level. Because that's basically, you know, what I'm sure you're chomping at the bit to get is that next level. Yeah, sure. you just kind of got to get in there. And like I said, we're grinding for it. I'm working really hard for it and it's coming. So I just got to just got to wait, let the universe do what it's got to do. And then, yeah, 
uh, once I get that opportunity, I think it's gonna it's gonna change a lot of things, and I'm really excited about it. So, yeah, As stay well. tuned. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Thank your husband and thank Nick at HK USA yes. for setting the whole thing up. This thing has been yes. a blast. No, and thank you for, you know, I think podcasts are so awesome, especially for someone who is actually involved in the sport as well, being commentator and all this. Uh, you're showing another side to fighters, which I think is so important. We do, a lot of us do have more to us than just kind of going in there and fighting and being brawlers. So, mm -hmm. Kind of shedding light on that i think is really awesome especially in a time right now that's lighten the mood as best we can so i appreciate you being able to have me on here absolutely and real quick uh you mentioned that you play cello yeah. <laughs> so did this guy. So yes did this guy. okay okay so <laughs> yeah that's i knew i liked you <laughs> i mean i was a little i mean i'm still a little guy but i was even littler <laughs> back then i was on the a quarter. I wasn't even at a half or a full. Oh my gosh. Was, okay. Yeah. It was basically a violin with a stem is what it was. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. That's one of my goals is to definitely pick it up again. I still have my old cello, but maybe once I retire, that's something I'll be able to pick up again. So always have my love for my cello and anyone who plays the cello. Love you guys. <laughs> Yes, right. so it's a very good thing. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, again, I appreciate the time. And as soon as you get uh, your next fight signed, let's do this again so we can talk some more. Okay? Absolutely. Yeah, we will definitely do that. All right. Well, until next time, we'll Bye. see you later. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye. See you. Bye.